You're listening to SM Media, the number one place for exclusive content. Hi everyone and welcome to this week's episode of All Time 11 right here on SM Media. I'm Scott McPay, delighted to be your host as always. Got a very special guest in this episode. I'm joined by the former Gretna, Dundee, Ross County and Stenhouse Muir striker, Colin McMenamin. Colin, thanks very much for joining me. It's a pleasure to welcome you on the show. Oh, thanks very much for having me. I appreciate it. How are you doing? All right? Very well. Other than everything else that everyone else is going through, um, plod along. It's been okay. All right, it's been a it's been strange times, but obviously football wise, what you what you kind of doing with yourself? Are you still playing? Still playing, um, for some stupid reason. But no, nope, um, I've joined Cumberland to be assistant manager to my mate Kieran. Um, and the way things have turned out, I've ended up having to play as well. So nearly 40, 40 next month, um, but still playing and just love of the game in it. You just can't help yourself. Is it hard to get that but the bugger not playing? <laughs> like ah, huge. Huge. Um, listen, see football players, we think we're 25 year old for the yeah. whole of your career. You do. Um, but unfortunately, that's not what happens. So everybody keeps saying, play as long as you can. And uh, that's what I'm going to do. Definitely. You had a really good career. You started out at Queen of the South and Annan as well. And then you, you get a big move to Newcastle along with your pal Ryan McGuffey. How, what was your kind of experience like going to Newcastle at such a young age? It was quite surreal. Um, I was obviously at Queen of the South as a kid. I was at Rangers as a kid. And they kind of let me go and I wasn't too fussed. And I was lucky enough that when I signed for Annan that um, David Irons was the manager. Right. And he really pushed me. He really kind of told me that I could have a career in the game, which I was like, didn't think I could. Uh, but it turned out that by the, the end of my first season at Annan, I'd I could have signed for five or six different teams in Scotland. Um, and we were all in the Premier League at the time. Yeah. But when Newcastle came in, you know, Ryan was all, already there. Mm-hmm. I just thought, oh, no, it's, it's, it was far too big an opportunity to miss out on. So for some reason, I went for the East of Scotland League to the Premier League with Newcastle. And what was it like rubbing shoulders with like Shearer, Kieran Dyer, Gary Speed, Bobby Robson was a manager? Like just what was, the, what was your experience <laughs> like there? Obviously quite surreal. Um, I, I remember playing with Annan on a Saturday and on a Monday morning being Alan Shearer's training partner for <laughs> shooting. So that's the kind of way it went. Um, surreal, but it got to the point there where you realise, wow, this is a different level. Um, and I realised that I had to work. I, I had to work really hard to just yeah. to kind of train with these guys. Because in training, went from here to there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was incredible. Um, really good top club, top manager, top players. And to be fair, that the two seasons I was there, I think we finished third and fourth and got to the Champions League both years. And when you think about that now, Newcastle finishing the top yeah, four. I know. It, it's huge. Brilliant. After you left Newcastle, you came back up the road and came to Livingston and you also had spells down in England with Shrewsbury and you had a spell at Falkirk. What was your kind of best experiences out of those three spells of your, your career? Well, to be fair, with Livingston, when I came back up the road, the first four years at Livingston were great because I made my debut, I scored my first goal, um, played in the Scottish Cup semi-final. I, I played in a lot of big games with, with yeah. Livingston. Um, when I was at Falkirk, I was only at Falkirk for six months. Yeah. I went on loan there when uh, Livingston were going down a different route. They mm-hmm. brought in the, the Brazilian manager and it was a bit up and down. Um, so I loved my time at Falkirk, especially under John Hughes. Loved yeah. him a bit because um, Falkirk are a huge club. Mm-hmm. But when I went back to Livingston after my loan spell, I managed to, I scored against Celtic, scored against Rangers, Hearts, Aberdeen, scored against all the top clubs and uh, had a really good time. And when all the kind of bad stuff that was happening at Livingston, I probably benefited out of it because I started playing a lot more. Yeah. So that first four years of my 
I don't I don't class Newcastle as part of my career because right. I didn't play. Right. I didn't play. I, listen, I wasn't even close. The players were incredible. Um, and it was all reserve football. But when I came to Livingston, I was a first team player. Mm-hmm. So I learned so much in that t- time that I think it really helped me progress my career after that. So the fact that to play with the players that I played with and score my first goal, make my debut, play at Parkhead, play at Ibrox, that stage of my career was really important to me. Brilliant. You moved to Gretna. You moved to Gretna when they're in the, the first division at the time and you, you won the title in your first season and got up to the Premier League. The two seasons you were there, just kind of sum up the what it was like. It was obviously a roller coaster, you know. It, it was it looked really good at the start, and then kind of went up to the SPL. It turned it kind of went downhill really quickly. Did you? What was it like the first season? Just to, when you went into the first division, and it was a good, it was a really good team that was built that season. The first, I would, uh, the first seven eight months was incredible. Um, I'd signed from Shrewsbury and. People tell you when you're playing in England, stay in England. But yeah. there was something that attracted me to come back to Gretna. And I'd obviously been away for a couple of years and I didn't know what was happening. But I came back up the road and I seen players that I was at Livingston with, like proper professionals, uh, Steve Tosh, yeah. Bingham, Alan Main. I was like, wow, like this is this is a club that really wants to go places. And uh, I was fortunate enough that it really started really good for me. Scored a lot of goals that first season at Gretna. Um, we obviously won the first division, we got promoted and everything was great. Mm-hmm. It, everything was in place at that point. It wasn't until we started sharing with Motherwell yeah. that when we went into the Premier League and started sharing with Motherwell that you started to see a bit of warning signs and uh, it was disappointing but we had a core fans of 1500 mm-hmm. in Gretna once we started sharing with Motherwell, it's like Brooks. 90 miles Aye. and it killed it. It really did. And obviously Brooks, his health was deteriorating. Yeah. And it really became a really horrible and toxic place, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. And everybody could see where it was going. Yeah, definitely. We'll talk about the rest of your career later on in the show, but we'll, we'll make a wee start on your team. Are you, you're going with a formation of 4 3 3. Is it players you played with or played against? Yep, all players that I've played with, um, probably too many that I've played against, so God, it's too many that I've played with, but um, no, I'm going with a team of 4-3-3, three, three, the players that I've played with. Brilliant. We'll make a wee start, we'll start off with your goalkeeper, who you got in the, the goalkeeper position? As I started this, I thought this is going to be the hardest position, because I've played with Rob Douglas, played with Michael Fraser, I've played with Alan Mayne all top goalkeepers, even when I went and turned part-time, we played with Graham Smith, who yeah. had an unbelievable career. But um, I've went with Joe Hart. Mm-hmm. Um, I was fortunate enough to play with Joe when I was at Shrewsbury. Um, good friend of mine. And at the time, we all knew that he was going to be the top man. We just knew. He was only 18, 19. And if you ask anybody at Shrewsbury at that age, we knew Joe was going to be the top player. We knew him. Um, when he decided to leave Shrewsbury, he asked me for his uh, about his advice, and I told him to go to Everton. <laughs> right. So I made the mistake there, but at the time, Man City didn't have the money. Yeah. Um, and I think Chris Woods was the goalie coach at Everton. I remember telling Joe, "Go to Everton, go to Everton." Yeah. Fortunately for Joe, he made the right decision with Man City, and uh, well, he's had a great career since then. And he's now it's still at one of the top clubs in the Premier League. And uh, he's played World Cups, Champions League. So not Joe is probably a, the easiest one that I'll get out of them all. Brilliant. We'll move on to right back. Who have you got in the right back position? I played with a lot of good right backs, but I'm from Dumfries. Grew up there, uh, and so I'm going for Ryan McGuffey. Right. Okay. Um, I've grew up in youth football where I am. Um, when I went to Newcastle, he was there. He was my flatmate. Um, Came back up the road to Gretna. He was there. After Dundee, when things were looking a bit gloomy because of the administration, I went to Queen of the South and Ryan was there. Yeah. And I'm fortunate enough that he's my, my mate, mm-hmm. but at the same time, he's a good player. Yeah. People don't understand that Ryan played centre mid with Morton. 
He played right back with Newcastle. He played centre half with Gretna. He played right back with Queen of South. Top, top player, top, top man. And I couldn't imagine ever having an all-time 11 and Ryan no better in it. Brilliant. We'll move on to the left back. Who's on the other side? Yeah, this was a bit easier to be fair. There was probably, I was only between two. Um, I was between Jamie McAllister at Livingston, who yeah. scored the goal in the, the League Cup final, and Danny Granger. But I've, I've went with Danny. Right. I just think at his age, at Gretna, that was a tough, tough changing room. Yeah. Spoke about Steve Tosh. We, we had some really big characters in that changing room. James Grady, Stevie Tosh, Derek Townsley, some John O'Neill, like some yeah. really top players. So for a kid to come through and be as good as he was and be so assured, and the fact that he went on better after Gretna. There's not a lot of players when you look at our Gretna team that went on to bigger and better, but Danny did. He had that belief. Um, the fact I think he scored in the Scottish Cup final as well. Yeah. So he went on to Dundee United, St Johnston, Hearts. He's now a manager. I just think it's testament to the boy that he's a good top, top, top pro, top, top player. And uh, it was actually very lucky I played with him at that point. Yeah, he's definitely done really well for himself. See, when you touch on Dundee before we move on to your centre half, mm-hmm. like what was obviously the, the administration will be the big thing for that that period. But what was was it good at the start before it all went sour? Everything was good. Loved it. Loved my time at Dundee. Played with some top players, a couple of top managers as well, to be honest. Um, what happened shouldn't have happened to a club like Dundee. It yeah. should not have happened. Um, I think I finished second in the first division every year I was there. Right. Which says a lot that we, we were just that wee bit away. Yeah. Um, but people don't realise how big a club Dundee are. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people will compare them to Dundee United. See, when you're there, Dundee are a bigger club than Dundee United. It's right, as okay. simple as that. It's huge, absolutely huge. And uh, the fact that they're in the championship again the now, they're like, oh, God. But believe me, I know James McPay, the manager. Mm-hmm. Like Dundee will once again get up there. Yeah. Dundee, play, Dundee played in European semi-finals and everything mm-hmm. in the 60s and 70s with top players. Uh, and I loved every minute of it there. Obviously, it ended a bit sourly with administration and redundancies. But uh, I loved every second of the fact that I was there and the fact that I played by a team of that size. It actually makes me feel good about myself. Brilliant. We'll move on to your centre-back. We'll start off with your left-sided centre-back. Mm-hmm. Who, you, who you got there? That easiest one on the pitch is Grant Monroe. Right, OK. Um, played by Grant Monroe at Ross County when we were in the league. But the fact that he only played with Inverness and Ross County is a shambles. He it is it, honestly he should have played so much higher. I'm so surprised that he didn't go higher. It's probably down to him. He was right. comfortable. Mm-hmm. He's an Inverness boy. Yeah. He's comfortable up there. But see when you look at his stats as a centre half, I mean, he's the same height as me, he's just just under six foot. But one every header, left footed, which you don't get a lot of, um, scored goals, organised, a leader, as good as you're going to get at the level that I played at. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm so surprised that he never went higher. Uh, the fact that he's probably the nicest guy you'll ever play with in football as well. Um, it was a no brainer to pick Grant on my left side of my ass. Brilliant. On the right side of centre half, where you got Parliament, Grant? Um, well, I'd, I'd watched Paul Austin's that he'd done, and he didn't want to put too many people that he played with in the reserves. Obviously, he was at Celtic. Um, I was at Newcastle in the reserves, but I was lucky enough to have a, a coach at Newcastle that made us a kind of club team, a yeah. reserve team. Okay. And uh, every game is that we had to win it, and we were very close for two years. And this player never got the chance at Newcastle. However, he came on, he became a huge, huge player for Hibs, Celtic, Scotland. And it would have to be Gary Caldwell. Right, OK. Um, now, I wasn't one of these people that wanted to pick players that I'd played in the reserves with. But as I've said, it was huge. Um, I learned so much for Gary. Mm-hmm. People will say this and that, but 
I wish it had his determination. I wish it had his enthusiasm. He was a top, top player. The fact that he's went step by step, higher and higher, is a testament to him. Yeah. Um, he played at Hibs. He probably got knocked off some fans. He went to Celtic. He got knocked off some fans. He went to Wigan. But he was as good as a player as you'll play with. The fact that he played centre midfield for Scotland as well. Yeah. People forget that he'd go from here to there and play every position gone. So I played with guys 50, 60 games. Mm-hmm. So that's the fact that I know it's difficult to pick players that you play in the reserves with, but there, there's probably nobody better that I've played with in that position. And I yeah. thought about Marvin Andrews, I thought about Martin Cannon, but I was like, I learned so much playing with beside guys and um, the fact that he's had the career that he has, I think it talks about still. Yeah, definitely. I couldn't agree more. Brilliant defence so far. I'll, we'll touch a bit in your career, obviously, a, a later on. The Queen of the South after the D, and then you did, what the, would you say Ross County was the best spell of your career? Probably. I um, we just we just had a right good bunch of boys up there. Um, I know you've spoke to a couple of the boys about it. Um, there was a certain camaraderie that it was sink or swim up there. Mm-hmm. You couldn't be. You couldn't hide. You could yeah. not hide. You had to kind of step up. If you weren't good enough in training, you'd know about it. Yeah. There was fights. Like, I'm talking full fisticuffs, punching, fighting in training. Um, afterwards, we'd sit and have lunch together. Mm-hmm. So, I kind of reveled in that. I was older than a lot of them. Yeah. Myself and Grant Monroe were probably the kind of elder statesmen. But, it was a good club mm-hmm. and still is a good club. Like Roy McGregor's done magnificent up there. Mm-hmm. The, the fact that he's got a provincial club like that, I think Dingwall only got like 12,000 people in it. Yeah. The fact that they're playing in the Premier League in Scotland, holding their own and doing great, just a wonderful club. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I loved my time up there. And it was unfortunate it came to a bit of an end because circumstances changed. Yeah, definitely. We'll move on to your midfield. You, you're playing three in midfield. Are you playing a sitter on two, a left and a right? Or how are you working it? I believe I've got this bit of paper right in front of me and I've not actually circled my third midfielder yet because I'm still <laughs> no 100%. Um, so either side of my sitting midfielder, uh, on one side I'm going to have Robert Snodgrass. Right, okay. Um, now, I've known Snoddy since he was probably 16. Mm-hmm. Um Again, everybody knew that what he had. We all knew what he had. I was part of the team that when they, they got they sent him out on loan to Stirling Albion. Yeah. And his players were all rubbing their heads, going, This this player's got everything. Mm-hmm. He has got everything. Um and Snoddy will be the first to tell you that his attitude probably wasn't the right at the time and he didn't do the right things. But he screwed the nut. He really yeah. did screw it and we just need to see it. Like his stats, his appearances in the Premier League, we all knew what he had. Um, he's probably the best player that I played with, right? Because I think you could put Snoddy anywhere in the park, yeah, and he, and he would be able to play. Mm-hmm. His left foot's as good as you'll see. Mm-hmm. He's the nicest boy you'll meet. He's got time for everybody. The fact that he's in the Premier League, one of the top players says everything about him because he'll still come up to Glasgow, he'll still do his charity work up here and he'll, he's got time for everybody. The fact that the one thing that if he'd had a bit of pace, it would have been scary. Yeah. It would have been scary. And he'll, he'll tell you so if he didn't have that bit of pace. If he'd had pace the way that some of the other players had, it's actually quite scary to think where he could have went yeah, because definitely. he didn't need pace to put across in the box and put something, assist some strikers' heads. Just top player, top. In fact, one of the best players that Scotland have produced in that left side in twenty years, and we're quite lucky to have him. Yeah, definitely couldn't agree more with that. We'll move on to the right side of centre midfield. Who you got in there? Right. Well, this is where it gets difficult because 
my right sided player is left footed. Um, right. <laughs> to try and fit in the players that you want, I've went with Button O'Brien. Right, okay. Um, now, Button was your captain at Livingston the year that we had a really hard year. Um, and I don't know if people will remember, you used to do the Sunday Mail ratings. Mm-hmm, that's right. And it, it would build up for every year. Uh, in the year that I think we finished second but for bottom, Button won it. In, in front of players are Larson and Arvaladze and Barry Ferguson. Button won it. He was incredible. Yeah, he was really underrated, I thought. Oh, the fact, it, I'm pretty sure South Africa tried to get him to play for them and there was mm-hmm. problems with the visas and stuff, but Button was incredible. He was your captain uh, at Livingston the year that it was really difficult. Yeah. Um, and Button's another one that you could actually play anywhere across the front three or the middle three. And he was, he became a, he just became the person we'd go to. He was so good. And the fact that he, he moved to Sheffield Wednesday after after Livingston. Yeah. Um, I've, I, it's hard to describe how good he was mm-hmm. because he went about his business in a way that was quite nondescript. Get it, give it, get it, give it. But then all of a sudden, when we really needed him, he'd pop up with a goal yeah. in midfield. And the fact that he went on after us, he left us and went and had a great career. In fact, he's got a good career now. He's changed it. He's set up his own soccer school. Yeah. He's set up his own his own building just to help kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wish there was more like him because I think there's a lot of players of his ilk that, that don't do enough to help others. But he's, he's set up his own soccer school and probably as good as you'll get in Scotland at that role that he played for us that year. Yeah, he's a brilliant player. Definitely. Sitting in the, the centre of midfield, who's the who's the centre of the three? <laughs> as, I, as I said, I've not actually circled it. I've circled my whole team apart for this position. And I've got like Stevie Tosh. I've got Paul Lawson. I've got Kev McDonald, who's still playing the Premiership now. Yeah. I've got Brian Kerr, who I played with at Newcastle and Dundee and played with Scotland. But it's a full Livy midfield. I'm going to go for Stuart Lovell. Right, okay. Uh, Stuart Lovell, he was in international with Australia. Played with Hibs. Came, he was at Livingston with us. And without being brilliant, he was always excellent, if that makes sense. Yeah. He, as a young player trying to make it through in the game, he'd grab you, he'd talk to you, he'd tell you what you were doing right, he'd tell you what you are doing wrong just a top, top player and a lot of people will not remember Stuart Lovell because defensive midfielders didn't exist then. Mm-hmm. It seems to be the fashion now. Yeah. But back then, nobody really spoke about them. And uh, he's, he's one of these players that every single person that you talk to will say, how good was Archie? Mm-hmm. How good was Archie? And uh, it would be hard to pick a midfield without him in it yeah. because he would tell the two in front what to do. Mm-hmm. He would tell the full-backs what to do. He would protect your two centre-halves. He would get up in support. He would tell. And he's just top, top player. And the fact that people don't recognise him as much. He was captain of Livingston when Livingston won the, the League Cup. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And people forget that a team like Livingston won the League Cup, I think it was 2004. Archie was a captain and he was a driving force behind the whole team. Mm-hmm. So he was. Um, I find it strange that he never went into coaching or management. Yeah. But he did go down the route of the PFA. Mm-hmm. That's right, in the yeah. media. Yeah. And obviously he's in the media as well. But I always thought that he would be a top coach and I'm surprised he ever went down that route. Yeah, brilliant midfielder, brilliant player, Stuart Lovell. But we'll touch on your, your time at Stenhouse Muir. You, you had four years there as a player before you moved into management. Was the, was the four years as a player the, a really good spell for you? Loved every minute. Brilliant. Uh, really, really love the club. It's as good. It's the best club I've played for. Um, I've said that a couple of times. Um, wonderful club. 
the things that they do for the community are second to none. Um, even through these times where it's difficult for everybody, um, the things that they've done, I think it's been recognised with the SFA and it's been recognised that they've been taking out meals and all that. It's a wonderful football club. Um, the reason I went there is, I, I, I don't know, it was Scott Booth was the manager at the time. He asked me to be a coach. Yeah. And uh, it kind of attracted me to it. Um, I was fortunate enough that I became a coach there. I then became a captain there. I then became first team coach. And I then became the manager. These things might have happened too quickly for me. Right. But at the same time, I've I've got the the experience now that will hold me in good stead because it's a wonderful football club. Yeah. Would you get back into management if the opportunities to come up? Um, well, I, I got interviewed for a couple of jobs in the summer there. Um, it's definitely something that would interest me. I've learned a lot from my time at Senny. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not, I've, I'm not going to kid on. It was probably too soon for me to take the job. I yeah. probably should have took it at the time. Um, I was probably too close to some of the players and the things that happen. But I love coaching. Mm-hmm. I really love being out on the pitch with players. And at the moment, that's what I've got. I've got no stress for the manager, so I go and coach. So it's definitely something that I would look into in the future. And it's definitely something I'd like to get back into. Brilliant. I'm glad to hear it. We'll move. We'll finish up with your strikers. You've got you've got three strikers a year. Is it just three up front? Or are we doing a left, right, and a, a centre? How are we doing it? Uh, well, I don't know. Um, all three could play in all three positions. To be fair, so yeah. on the left hand side, I'll go with uh, David Fernandez. Right. Okay. Um, he's probably if you've done anything else, he'll probably get mentioned a lot. Yeah, he's turned up in a couple of these already. I can imagine <laughs> he was uh, incredible. As a young striker, growing up through... And it, I think it's hard... I might be bumping my gums, but it was harder for my age group to come through at that age. Mm-hmm. It was kind of old school. And it's different now. You can't be as hard on young players as you were. And I came through in a team with Lee Mako and David Bingham, Barry Wilson. yeah. It was hard, um, but David Fernandez was kind of different. He would put his hand around you, he would talk to you, tell you what you're doing wrong, and the, you can just look at the the career that he had. The fact that he went from Livingston to Celtic yeah. doesn't it happen a lot. Low centre of gravity. He knew how to be number nine. He knew how to go up against centre halves. He could drop into the hole, be creative, and. I think he's, I'm pretty sure he's a scout at Barcelona now. I'm sure he's, in, I'm sure he's kind of employed by Barcelona. So I think it says a lot about how good he was. Mm-hmm. That How can you no put him in your team when you, you were lucky enough to play against him? Eh, play yeah. with him, sorry. Yeah, he was definitely a top player. Right-hand side of the, the front three, who's there? The fact that I had my, my best time at Ross County, um, scored my most goals and just enjoyed my football. I'm going with Michael Gardine. Right, okay. Um, we Midge, me and him just had this kind of, we just knew with each other we are all the mm-hmm. time. Don't get me wrong, he would never go long. He would always go short. <laughs> so I knew that I had to go long all the time, but even when we went long, he, he would work off me. Um, it got to a spell where we were fighting each other to be the top goal scorer that season. I think I think Midge got 19, I think I got 21. Man. Between us, to get 40 goals between our front two is quite impressive in a league winning team. And the fact that he's still playing and still being a major, major player in the Ross County team, it would be really difficult not to, not to have him in my team. Are you surprised he never went higher? Well, he, he got his move to Dundee United yeah. uh, from us the year that we, we went and won the league and got promoted, he didn't get much of a chance at Dundee United. And sometimes a club fits a football player. Yeah. And when you look at Midge, Ross County fits him. Mm-hmm. He went there on loan for Celtic before he actually signed. He then signed 
and he left. So I think he's had three different spells. Yeah. No, he's Ross County's all-time appearance holder. He's Ross County's all-time goal scorer. He's, as you've probably heard, mental in the changing room. Yeah, he really does. He really does kind of bond everybody. And anybody that's played with Madge will tell you, I've not got a bad word to say about him. Mm-hmm. Because as much as all the daftness, and believe me, there's a lot of daftness, see when it comes on the pitch, nobody works harder than him. Yeah. Nobody covers as much ground as him. Mm-hmm. And a great teammate, a really good football player, and somebody that's probably underachieved because everybody knows how good he is. Yeah. He's just kind of let himself... No, I'm not going to say let himself down, but he could definitely have played higher if he'd wanted to. Yeah, definitely. We'll finish up with your, your man through the middle. Who have we got? I'm going with Lee Griffiths. Right, OK. Um, it's quite easy, that one, to be honest. Could you see even at Dundee that he was going to go and be the, the big, name, big game player that he was? Well, I, I was fortunate enough. I was at Livingston as well with him. Right, yeah, sure you were. I was... Uh, when he was breaking through and I seen him mention a podcast that because they signed me on loan it kind of stunted him a wee bit and I was like oh god I didn't stunt you that much <laughs> um, incredible fo- I seen him at 16 mm-hmm. so that at 16 at Livingston and you just know you, and I know it's quite cliche but you know you can see this player at 16 coming into the first team and his left foot is ridiculous. And you go, wow. He came to Dundee. He was still raw. But Jockey Scott got a, grabbed a hold of him. And yeah. then he had good pros. Eric Payton grabbed him. Gary Harkins grabbed him. Mm-hmm. Rab Douglas pinned him up against the wall a few times. <laughs> and we just to see him now. He's Scotland's best striker. Mm-hmm. It's as simple as that. He's probably still Celtic's best striker. And... It's hard to say anything bad against him. The way he worked in training, the way that he plays, the way he scores goals is, you don't get that often, it's all natural. Yeah. And I was lucky enough to play well with two different teams. Um, and I couldn't have a trouble with him without having Lee Griffiths in it. He's probably Scotland's best striker in the last 15 years. Yeah, definitely. Brilliant team. Is there any players that just gradually miss out in the, that, that could have been <laughs> easily in the team? There's loads. As I went through the keepers, I've got Rab Douglas, Alan Main, right back, like David McNamee and Mm -hmm. Gary Irvin. Left back, I've got Jamie McAllister, centre half, Marvin Andrews. My midfield was really hard because obviously I played with Richie Britton, who was incredible. Yeah. Lee Mako, uh, Dave Edwards, who went on to play in the Euros with with Wales. Yeah, that's right. I was at Shrewsbury with him and Gary Harkins, who everybody talks about, is a, a maverick in Scottish football. Really hard to miss out. And up front, I played with Jason Scotland, who played the Premiership. Played with James Grady, who one of the top strikers in Scotland in his time. So it's been really, really difficult. Kevin McDonald as well, midfielder. He's still at Fulham in the Premier League. I'm, like, I'm leaving him out. But um, in terms of the way you try to set your team up, I just think that team would be really, really difficult to beat. Yeah, definitely. Couldn't agree more. Is uh just when we're, we're finishing up, is like obviously you went to Huddleford after Stenhouse Muir and that how what's your plans for the future? Like what would you what would you be keen to do after you know you can't play anymore? I know. It's that gets to that stage where you think you can play forever. Um, I did not I didn't plan on playing this year. Right. But Circumstances with COVID and all that, and the lack of players, and I've just I helped the team out. So I've been fortunate enough that I've kept fit, and yeah. I've scored a couple of goals this year and done okay. Um, plans for the future: I would love to become a manager again. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, because of my time at Steny, that might be difficult to get in at that level again. But I've certainly I've certainly learned a lot from that experience. Um, I was fortunate enough to go to. We went away to Petardry with Stenhouse Muir. I went away to Tynecastle as manager. So I've, I've, I have done a bit. Yeah. I've obviously learned a lot from it. But um, as, he, as, a, as the months pass and the season's come to an end, 
I need to make a big decision next year whether what I'm going to do. But at the moment, I'm coaching and I love it. But, uh, if the the role of a manager came up somewhere, it's definitely something I would look into. Yeah, definitely. Colin, it's been an absolute pleasure to be on the show, mate. The team's brilliant. I really can't thank you enough for joining me. It's been a pleasure. No problem. Thanks very much for Thanks having me. Brilliant. Cheers, Cheers Colin. Cheers.